The first thing you'll want to do is punch all 35 holes that have been pre-marked on your web guide. Starting off, you'll need the lining, the foam, the exterior, and the guide. First, you'll want to attach the foam to the exterior piece. I like to use Elmer's Craft Bond. Make sure you've got really good adhesion. Now grab your guide and you're going to want to line up the two flat edges and clip them together. Using some kind of removable marking tool, make a dot in the center of each hole. Remove your clips and make sure you didn't miss any of the holes. Well, look who decided to go against the order of the process. Ignore the tools in my hand and mark your center along the top flat edge. Then grab a marking tool and a ruler. From each of the seven points, draw a straight line up to your center marking. The dots that you made in the previous step may not line up perfectly with these lines, which is totally okay. Just go ahead and remark them or make any adjustments that you need to. Once your lines are marked, take the flap over to your machine and do a straight stitch down each one of those lines. Now, if you want, you can back stitch within the seam allowance. However, at the top, it does tend to get a little bit thick since all of the stitches meet in one place. So you can pull those through to the back and tie them all off if you'd prefer. Fair warning. Once your machine foot starts to move over your stitches, you may smudge your ink markings. You can go ahead and redo those when you're done stitching, or you can just kind of wing it. Now you'll need some kind of a cylindrical tool to make the little bowed marks to complete the web. This little eight ounce cup is perfect for this. Line the rim up between two dots and trace your marking tool around the bend. Going from dot to dot to dot, you can make adjustments as needed. Once you've completed your markings and are satisfied with their placement, go ahead and top stitch. I prefer to leave my threads long to pull through to the back side because it makes the finished piece look neater. But don't let me be the one to tell you that you're not allowed to back stitch. When done, pull your threads to the back and tie them off with at least two or three knots each. I usually burn them to lock them in place, but with the foam, it's a bit safer to just use some fray check. Now you can go ahead and just give it a quick cleaning to remove any of your drawn marks from previous steps. Now set the exterior aside and grab your lining and be sure to mark your center on the top flat edge. Next, grab the flap lock placement guide. And just like you did with the previous guide, line it up along the top flat edge and add some clips to hold it in place. You should have previously put holes in the centers of the circles and you can use those holes to line up where you want your magnetic placement to be. As you can see on this one, I've chosen to do the top outer holes for a double magnetic closure. Remove your clips, double check your markings and install your magnets. Now place both sides of the flap right sides together and add some clips. Now stitch along the bottom edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving the flat edge open. Trim your seam allowance down by half and if you need to get a little closer to each of the sharper corners, feel free to do that as well. Now you can fold the flap right sides out 
and try to poke out those corners as best you can, but using caution so that you don't accidentally poke your tool between the two layers. Hey, look, it's the last step. Go ahead and top stitch your flap at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and baste the top closed. Once you've trimmed off your threads, your flap is good to go and you can continue on with the rest of the bag as usual. Start by attaching the foam to the exterior piece. Now grab your guide and make sure that you cut out the two sections that say cut me out. Now place your guide on top of your exterior piece, making sure that the flat top edge meets up with those two corners and clip everything together. Using a removable marking tool, trace along the four bowed edges of the guide. Now find your center along the top edge and use a ruler to draw the connecting line from the top to the bottom and the center of the flap. Next, go ahead and take it over to your machine and stitch down each of your drawn lines. Now go ahead and give it a quick clean to remove your marks. Next, mark the center of your lining piece and then use the flap lock placement guide to mark the location for your magnets. and then go ahead and install your magnets. Place the lining and exterior right sides together and add some clips. And then go ahead and sew around the outer edge at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving the top edge open. Remember to trim your seam allowance down by half. Next, flip your flap so that it's right side out and carefully poke out your corners. Press and add clips as needed, and then top stitch around the entire piece at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Your flap is now ready to be sewn into your bag. First we'll be attaching the skull flap backing piece to the exterior piece. I like to secure it first with a little piece of tape just so it doesn't shift around. Then attach the foam to the back of the exterior. And now you're going to top stitch around the eye and the nose area. And remember to keep your beginning threads long as well as your ending threads so you can pull them through the back. Remember to go slow and take your time.
When you reach the end of your stitching, pull all of your threads to the back and tie them off. Next, mark your placement with the guide and install your snaps. Now lay both pieces together right sides together and stitch 3 8 of an inch around the entire rounded edge, leaving the top flat edge open. At this point, it's not necessary, but I like to add a few snips here and there along the curved edge just to make sure that everything tucks in nicely. Now go ahead and flip your piece right sides out and make sure you get all of those rounded corners nice and smooth. Go ahead and add clips if you need and top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance around the entire exterior edge. And now your flap is ready to be added to your bag. This flap is done exactly the same as the original flap is, so if you want, you can skip my directions and just move on to the next one, or you can just listen along just because. First, you need to attach the foam to the exterior piece. Next, use the flap lock placement guide to once again mark the locations for your magnets. Once marked, go ahead and install your magnets. Now place the two pieces right sides together and clip and stitch at a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the sides and the bottom leaving the top flat edge open. Then you're going to go ahead and trim down your seam allowance by half and make sure that in some way you clip your corners so that it eliminates the bulk when you turn it out. Turn your flap right sides out and get all those corners poked out as well as you can. If you need to press it, go for it. And then top stitch at an eighth of an inch around the entire outer edge. And now your flap is ready to be added to your bag. First, you'll want to attach the jack-o'-lantern flap backing piece to the wrong side of the exterior. And again, I'm going to use a small piece of tape. Next, add your foam.
Next, we're going to top stitch around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And once again, remember to go slow. Remember to pull your threads to the back to ensure a clean look. Next, grab the jack-o'-lantern marking guide and make sure that you cut out the two sections that say cut me out. And then line up the top two notches of the guide with the top flat edge of your exterior piece and clip into place. And now using a removable marking tool, trace the bowed edges of the cutout space. Now top stitch along all of those markings. Make sure that when you reach the mouth and the eyes that you do not stitch through the cutout portions. The best way to do this is once you hit your top stitching, stop stitching. Pull your threads long and pull them through the back tying them off. Be sure to wipe all of your marks off. Use the flat block placement guide to mark your magnet locations and then install them. Place both pieces right sides together and stitch at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Trim your seam allowance down by half. Now turn your flap right sides out and use clips if you need to and get your edge looking as nice as you can and then top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And now your flap is ready to be added to your bag. This flap is done a little bit differently than the rest. Starting off, you're gonna need your pattern piece as well as all three layers. And I like to cut them in squares so that they're slightly larger than the pattern piece. The first thing you'll wanna do is attach your foam to the exterior piece. And I am using my Elmer's Craft Bond spray glue as I normally do. Make sure you adhere it really, really well. Next, we're gonna use the pattern piece to trace onto the exterior. In this step, I also find it a lot easier to take a moment and cut the top edge so that you have a nice, even and clean edge to work with when lining up the pieces. Do this on both the exterior and the lining. Next, Make sure you line the pattern piece, the exterior, and the lining all together by that flat edge and add some clips. Mm -hmm. 
once clipped, use some kind of a writing tool to trace around the entire outer edge of the pattern piece. I'm using just a regular pen here because I know that I'm going to be trimming it down as well as using edge coat, so I'm not worried about my lines being seen. Next, you're going to pull the pattern piece off of your fabric and trim down the sides only. You just want the basic top shape of the pattern. Separate the layers and grab the flap lock placement guide and lay it across that flat edge at the top of the lining piece. Mark where your magnets are gonna go and go ahead and install them. Now using the flat edge as a guide, you'll want to make sure you realign the two pieces. You can baste them together with a spray or you can use clips. Now this part is completely voluntary. It's not actually part of the pattern. I just used a scrap piece of vinyl over my magnets. Because I'm using an industrial machine and the bottom of it is metal, it will attract my magnets. So this will just help so that my stitches don't get messed up and so that the magnet will glide smoothly over the machine. Now on the inside of the line that you drew, you're going to top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance around the entire piece, including the flat edge at the top. Be sure to go slow and take your time. It's not a race and the slower you go, the more control you have over your stitches. Next, grab your scissors or a rotary cutter or a blade or whatever you wanna use and trim around the rest of the pattern. Try and stay on or as close to your drawn lines as possible, leaving that 1 8 of an inch seam allowance just past your stitches. Again, go slow and take your time and don't be afraid to switch between tools if you need to. Now, if you'd like to use edge paint, you can. If not, your flap is ready to be added to your bag. Start by attaching the foam to the back of the backing piece. Then attach the drippy piece of the exterior to the backing piece of the exterior, making sure that they line up at the flat edge. Top stitch the drippy part 1 8 of an inch from the edge. Use the flap lock placement guide to mark where your magnets go and install them. Place both sides of the flap right sides together and stitch across the sides and bottom at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Turn your flap right sides out and poke out all of the corners and make sure all of your edges are nice and straight. Add clips and top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and baste the top of the flap closed. Your flap is now ready to be added to your bag. And that's it! 
That was the entire Halloween add-on pack for the Greedy Clutch, and I hope you were able to follow along easily enough. I'm sorry it took so long to get everything out there, but life's busy, so... Enjoy your new options and be sure to share them in the Hollow Bag Creations The Patterns group on Facebook. Bye!